waiting for Star Citizen's Persistent Universe to come out, but for me, the beginning was all about Squadron 42, and it still is a big part of my heart. On screen right now, you see the opening to one of my favorite one of Chris Roberts' games, and that's Wing Commander 3. You may ask me why. Wing Commander 1 will always have a special place in my heart because it was the first game that really introduced me into the way that games could actually be. Before this, it was kind of Elite style, which isn't bad at all. I played Elite for hours and hours on end, but with Wing Commander 1, I was able to play through many different ways, and each time I played through, Although the missions might be the same, the outcomes being different would bring me a different ending from time to time or different missions along the way. It was really interesting and kept me playing, but it also proved to me that you could mate the adventure game with something like a space simulator. And it worked, and it worked really well. Well, I've been bringing you Star Citizen news and hangar reviews and ship reviews and recently um, how-tos and let's plays of the Arena Commander. And I thought for this episode of Arena Commander's Let's Pew Pew playlist, I'd go back and show you why I am so hooked, addicted, obsessed, and passionate for Chris Roberts' games. This one has amazing actors in it. I mean, the cast is just incredible. Everybody from Mark Hamill, who we all remember as Luke Skywalker, but for me, he'll always be Colonel Blair. And we also have Malcolm McDowell from, well, recently, I think he was on, what's the name of that wonderful show, Big Bang Theory? I think he played a couple of episodes on that, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but Clockwork Orange back in the 60s or 70s. John Rice davies who's done everything from Sliders to Lord of the Rings, right? Like Gimli? <laughs> and, oh, well, we could go on and on. There's just actor after af actor in this, in this wonderful saga. Um, in its own right, this could be a motion picture, only you're playing through it. Here, we're seeing Angel, who was in both of the previous versions of Wing Commander or previous editions, not to mention the many mission packs, which there will be in Star Citizen Squadron 42 mission, um, single player campaign. Here you see the anti-heroes, I guess, the villains who aren't really villains. I mean, the way that the Terrans and the Karathi, which are these big ridiculously looking cat people but remember this is 1994 um, the way that they actually had their altercation beginning was a total accident and how do I know this because every time Chris Roberts makes a game there's a ton of written material to go along with it that gives you the background of what's going on and we're already seeing that in Star Citizen so the war started with an accidental firing on a science vessel, I think it was. And all of a sudden, here we are. Karathi versus Terran trying to wipe each other out. Here, Angel and her crew have been captured. And yes, her platoon was just disintegrated. And here we're listening to, I guess, the last of the Karathi, the ruler talking to the High Lord. It's about ready to talk to Colonel Devereaux, who in this case will be Colonel Blair's love interest. She's got that wonderful French accent too. And lo and behold, we're not going to give a spoiler because I think I'm going to play through this and maybe do every third or fourth episode of Let's Pew Pew. I'll do one of these. I already have the next mission after this one all set up but here we are angels standing tall being brave saying go ahead disintegrate me kill me and the karathi says we've got other options or different plans for you wouldn't you like to know what they are isn't she gorgeous 
So the thing that gets me about these games is actually how wonderful they are to play through. How each time you can get a different storyline based on the selections of interactions that you make with the different crew members, which will be in Squadron 42. And if you're not going to play through Squadron 42, let's face it, you're really not going to have the benefits of citizenship. That huge bow of a ship over there in the water is the Concordia. That's the last ship that Mark Hamill, Colonel Blair, was part of. Here we have Paladin, who is kind of a spy, a pilgrim, which if you look at Ben Lesnick, he wears a pilgrim's pendant on all the time. I wish I could get one of those. If any of you could get one of those for me, I would love it. We still see the different explosions going off. All hands dead on this ship. So, if you go back into my playlist, you'll find Chris Roberts AA, you know, Chris Roberts Games AA, and you'll see the original Wing Commander opening. So, maybe I'll go back at some point and put up Wing Commander 2, just so we have a little bit of both of them here. So the interaction between these two characters is amazing. Essentially, Paladin saying, it's not your fault, you're going to have to let it go. And just so you are up to speed, I don't. this is a spoiler alert, if you want to jump past us, please do. But in the previous, um, in the previous, not, I guess at the beginning or end of Wing Commander 1, beginning of Wing Commander 2, stealth fighters jump the Tiger's Claw and pretty much destroy it. And Colonel Blair is blamed for it and essentially busted down the captain. And he redeems himself in Wing Commander 2. And then, of course, there are many mission packs between the two. I think there's two or three for each one. Um, possibly two. Those games were awesome back then. I find them a little bit lackluster in the uh, in the gameplay today, but still amazing to play through. If you're wondering how I have this game, all you have to do is go out to GOG.com, which is good old games, and at some point last year I was able to get the whole kit and caboodle for about 10 bucks. And that included, well sorry, it was 20 bucks. And that included Wing Commander, Wing Commander 2, all the mission packs, Wing Commander 3, Wing Commander 4, Wing Commander Prophecy, Wing Commander Armada, Wing Commander Ac Academy, Privateer, and Privateer 2. If I'm missing anything, I'm sorry. I also have Star Lancer and Freelancer, so I have 11 games that Chris Roberts has been either part of or have been born out of his vision. Here's Malcolm McDowell, Admiral Talwin, and he's got a plan, and Colonel Blair doesn't know what it is this early in the game, and I'm not going to give that away as I want to play through it, but you can see he's a little pissed off at Malcolm McDowell. I would be too. So Colonel Blair goes off to his new assignment, which is the TCS victory. Here he is on the shuttle on his way out. And by the way, back when this game came out, it was one of the it was the first Wing Commander that had full motion um, video inside of it. This was state of the art back in 1994. I remember going off to EB Games to buy it and getting home and just being so excited about playing it and putting it in and then just spending countless hours going through it. Today, because it's running, I believe, either in DOSBox or some other kind of emulator, there are some glitches, and you'll see the glitches as you go from scene to scene, and also with the joystick. Um, you have to hit Control J to activate the joystick as soon as you start a mission. We'll see that. That's essentially the TCS Victories Task Force. It's a cruiser and a destroyer, and there'll also be a couple of frigates and transports in it, but you just don't see it. That was state-of-the-art back then. Think about how big the Bengal carrier is today. It's humongous, right? So here we see 
the shuttle landing on the flight deck of the TCS Victory. We could see a Hellcat and Arrow off there in the distance. I believe that's what they are. Might be a Thunderbolt. And here we're meeting the crew. We're going to meet the captain. We're going to meet Hobbs, who's the XO. The big cat who's in the ridiculously fake cat costume over there. <laughs> if you ask me, how did he ever get in it? And then you're going to see a couple of the crew members who you'll get to meet throughout the different, you know, throughout the rest of my series, I hope. Each one of these guys has something uh, important to go through. And you might lose some, you might not. It all depends on the way that you play through the game. The captain's pretty much being schooled on, well, who Mark Hamill is here. Right? He's welcoming him aboard and I'm telling him it's damn glad right to have here. you here as our wing commander, Captain Ison. Well, sir, I'll admit, I well if you think about it, if I was the captain, I'd be thinking every ship that this guy's been assigned to has blown up, been destroyed. Oh my lord, what's happening to this ship? But. A little bit of foreshadowing here, right? It is called the TS TCS Victory. You can't have a victory be sunk, right? There's been British ships named the Victory. Have any of them sunk? I'm not sure. If you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments below. Mark Hamill's just wonderful, isn't he? I was hoping that they would have him in this game, but with the recent contract with Disney for Star Wars. I guess he's not going to be able to do anything but that for the next, let's say, two to six years, right? Alrighty, so here we are. That's our task force. We now have three ships instead of two. Here's our flight deck being morphed, and there's an arrow on the left, an arrow on the right, and I think it's a Hellcat in the center. Here we are getting to the ready room or the flight ops center and we're going to meet Hobbs. There's a lot of these transitions. I kick them out in a little bit. And here's our big cat friend who we flew with in the secret missions and I believe secret missions were part of Wing Commander 1. Don't quote me on that but that's where we met Hobbs. He's a turncoat. He uh, feels that they're unjustly waging war against the Terrans because the way it is is the Karathi are trying to wipe out humankind and humankind is just trying to stay alive and fight back the Karathi and you'll have to wait and see the end of the series to see the irony behind all this Yes, the video is bad, and that's the way it was back then, because remember, this is 1994. There was no HD, there was no MP4, M4V, there was no MOV, there was no FLAC, there was no XVID, there was no AVI. This is just whatever the video was back then, and it was also running on uh, 1024 by 768 monitors, and uh, probably most likely 800 by 600 ones. Here I am putting in my call sign, Batgirl, and going in to check the controls. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off transitions. Go on, right over, top one. You got it. It's tough when you're talking to old me. She doesn't always get it. I'm going to turn off the subtitles and leave everything else on and get out of here. All right, that's where we can save our progress. Until then, we're just going to go around and check things out. That's where the ready room is. That's the flight deck. All right, here's our comms officer that pretty much tells us uh, tells us everything about the ship. Now, this is going to be the first interaction that we have with a crew member where we get to select how we treat him. you got to remember that building relationships in here is a lot like the relationships you build in current day games like Mass Effect, well, been my favorite like current I game you did, you series. I love that series Play and can't wait for more from them. And Jennifer Hale as Commander Shepard is my favorite. Well, I can't say for sure, Colonel, but if you want the straight dope around All right, 
check in with the so he's Ryan's. getting um, pretty much learning a little bit about him. And we're done. So we're going to go to two different places right now. We're going to go back up to the living quarters now, which is the green area. And then here we're going to meet Vaquero? Nope. She's got a problem. There's Hobbs. There's the bar. And she ditches. Hey, Hobbs. Poor Hobbs. How about going around with me? It's tough a being a turncoat, Thank isn't it? You. No. It sure is. So let's get up there and talk to this guy now. We have to go through the transitions. Here we go. And again, the movies Welcome get board, compressed. Sir. It's going from what used to be Windows 95, I believe, when this came out. And now Not it's running on... Well, Windows 8. I also have Windows this for the Mac. I should have recorded it on the Mac. Well, I don't have these issues have, with video or anything on the Mac. The game was like made for the Mac well, years and years ago and does run exceptionally well still under um, Mac OS X with a arch, really. emulator. They call you so we're homework, I see. learning a little yeah, bit about this guy about and I and think he's full of himself. Fine. But he, right now, is the What's leader in kills mind? in the squadron. Can I help it if so I might my data? think he's an he's ass, mind. but I'm going to keep him in a couple of my wings What's when I fly in the future, just because I want somebody they solid that's watching my six. They don't seem interested in sharing them, do they? But we'll pick the negative comment here, just because I don't trust him. All right. Now we're going to go into the bunk area. It's gonna take us a few seconds. This is one. Of, this is something that I love, and we're not gonna to have to go through this at all with uh, Squadron 42. The transitions will be seamless. I could only hope. Like we won't have all these loading screens. Remember, back then we were dealing with memory in the few hundred K to one meg, two megs. We weren't dealing with a whole bunch more. Here we are seeing our Help Me Obi-Wan Kenobi hologram of Colonel Devereaux telling her how much she loves Colonel Blair. I love you, baby. I love you. I love you too, Mark Hamill. You're awesome. <laughs> Colonel Blair. Which is kind of weird because in the first two series, he was like Colonel Blue Hair. He had hair so black it was blue, and here's Mark Hamill, which we know is sandy-colored hair. Alright, we're going to get our buns out of here, and we're going to go up to CIC, I believe it is, the bridge. So let's go up to the bridge, just showing you guys around the TCS victory. No, I don't have anything better to and do. here we are. I pulled into meeting a Biff <laughs> from none other than Back to the Future. He must have gone back far into the future after he got that pile of manure dumped on him the second time, right? Yeah, and he's just as asinine as Biff too, isn't he? Wonderful. I told you there were tons of awesome actors in here. And essentially, this is the peeing contest that these two have had from the beginning. Um, which was a lot more lighthearted in the first two episodes, you know, first two games because you were reading the stuff, you weren't hearing it. But here they get to play the whole dark end of it. Chris got very dark in this game, as you'll see as we go along. Also, I believe this was the first one of the three games to actually use 3D space. In the other two, they were just a bunch of sprites, which are 2D images, that were taken from different perspectives. And as you were flying around, you'd see a different one of those images. So there were enough images out there to depict a ship in 3D space, but they weren't actually 3D. You were always firing in a 2D environment. 
No, as a matter of fact, I have. And we're going to talk a little bit about the flight model when we get in. It really does show you exactly what Chris was talking about in his latest letter about the flight model. So, Biff and uh, Happy over here. <laughs> Please tell Let me, me tell what that's again. from. So. Comment below. They were uh, done with their contest. And I guess Colonel Blair in the end shows him who's who, right? Because he's our hero and Biff is our, well, he's our comic relief. And he might be maniac, but <laughs> he's always going to be Biff to me. Well, here's a cute girl up here, right? Colonel Blair. Is she as cute as Batgirl? I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. Oop. Colonel Blue Hair gets called to the briefing room. Here we go. We jump to the briefing room, and because I got rid of transitions, I get to go right through them without having too much of a lag. I'm here. And of course, of all people to be there, not the intelligence officer, not the XO, you know, it's the comms officer with the captain. Low budget, right? I don't know how low budget this game was with all the actors that are in it. Mark Hamill's got to be good for a lot more money than what you would think, right? There we go, we're done. So he just got his marching These orders, and now he goes off to the squadron ready room, talks about oh, and one last thing. what the mission is, and then he gets to pick his wingman. But there's only one choice, because only one person's sitting in the front row, and it's Hobbs himself. Hobbs. You're so for you're forced to pick Hobbs on the first mission. Dismissed. And good luck. All right, so we're going to get to see combat, and... The combat that's going to be coming up here as we get into our Hellcat and fly off to victory, I need to give a disclaimer. DOS Box doesn't do a amazing job. It does a fair job on newer systems. It has to put a multiplier in the clock rate. So you're running at 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5% of the total speed so you don't run so fast that the game is too fast to play. Um, as we get in here, you're going to see something bad. As soon as you get into the, to the flight deck, I guess it is, or the launch deck, your ship is just spinning, turning, see? Spinning, turning, unmoving the joystick, don't know what's happening. And this is one of those glitches that doesn't happen on the Mac version and happened on the PC version. Um, if you do go out and buy this game, because it's amazing and you should buy it if you're going to play through Squadron 42. Um, control J gives you control of the joystick immediately. But what you should do is hit A to auto exit the flight deck. And then hit Control J when you get to this point right here. So these ships are 3D, so you should hit Control J, and at some point in the next few seconds, you're going to see joystick mode enabled. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. Joystick mode. So Control J activates joystick mode, and A will get you right into autopilot. So now you're going to see how you flew back then. So one of the things that Chris talked about was yaw versus roll. In this game, it's all yaw. It's yaw and pitch. I don't believe there's any roll whatsoever. So you have yaw that way and you have pitch. And that's it. It's still making believe that you're in a 2D world, not a 3D world. Chris has explained to you why it has to be a uh, 2D world. I mean, uh, why uh, roll is better than pitch. It is better for the flight model. It's also better physiologically on the pilot. As you're seeing in this game, it was one of the first ones that actually had the shield effects as you were hitting it. I'm finding it hard to hit it because the laser beams aren't real laser beams. They're actually bolts that are being fired like a projectile. And if you notice, they're not going straight. They're actually leading or lagging behind, kind of like bullets would in real life. So he's giving them ballistic properties um, with no gravity in space. It's kind of tough, right? So you're 
pretending that this is a real space sim. Hobbs actually got one of those guys for us, and we got the other. So we're pretending that this is atmospheric flight in some ways, and pretending it's space flight in other ways. Somehow I get through this mission. Somehow. And in future episodes, you'll see me actually start to kick butt. So immediately I tell Hobbs to go out there and kick some butt, take on some of these dudes. Wait until you watch Mission 2. I kill off my wingman right in the opening seconds by tumbling into him because I forgot to hit A to get out of the hangar, but still was able to complete the mission by myself. Here we go. Oh, we got him. I bet you it's Hobbs. Actually, it says that we, we got all of the... Uh, all of the enemy contacts except for one. Hobbs got one. I believe we got three at the end of this. That was us. Computer objectives are done. We got one from the previous round, two here, and then we're going off. So the flight model here is very simplistic. There is no inertia. There is no gravity. There is no, there's no realism at all. The ships turn like they're pulling 75 Gs at times. But it was fun. The true fun in this game was the storyline, which is why I'm dying for Squadron 42. But the flight model itself is very, very, very ultra simplified for, you know, at this period of time, as we enter the hangar upside down, it, it worked. It worked really well. Look at this, we're flying upside down and we're gonna land. This is just hysterical. And there's our Hellcat coming in for a landing, and there it is, taxiing in. Um, that's about Hornet-sized, right? If you look at the ship designs, he was, you know, those are radiators for cooling in space. Why they have fins on it doesn't make sense, because there is no air in space. But you could believe those being an atmospheric flight, too. The ship designs are cool. Here's Rachel. She's the mechanic. <laughs> yeah. She's a mechanic, and I'm a supermodel. <laughs> you get the joke there, guys? So we're going to talk to Hobbs, and he's going to tell us how much he loved being out there in the thick of it. I'm sorry, Hobbs. You should have been out there the whole time, because you're a kick-ass pilot, better than most of the people on this ship. All right, so this is Wing Commander 3. This is my depiction of it, and mine alone. I happen to love the Wing Commander series all the way through the games that Chris didn't work on like Wing Commander 4 and Wing Commander Prophecy. Remember he had already left to go to Digital Anvil and work with Microsoft to bring us Star Lancer and then began the creation of Freelancer and you know what happened with that. Microsoft took over and it became the game it is which I love but totally different than what Chris intended in the beginning. Well, tune in next time for another episode of Let's Pew Pew with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. And I'll either be in the hangar teaching you how to fly with the X-55 or doing another one of these videos. If you like this one and want to see more videos like this, please like the video in the comment section below and if there's anything that you want to see in the future please put that in the comment section below too thank you all for watching thank you all for watching i really appreciate you supporting the show and you all be safe out there bye